I, I, I just don't even know why there aren't uprisings all over the country, and maybe there will be. People need to start taking to the streets. This is a dictator. You know, there needs to be unrest in the streets for as long as there is unrest in our lives. Enemies of the state. Show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful. Do something about your dad's immigration practices, you feckless. When they go low, we kick How do you resist the temptation to run up and wring her neck? The biggest terror threat in this country is white men, most of them radicalized right up to the right. I thought he should have punched him in the face. I said, even if you lost, he insulted your wife. Yes. He came down the escalator and called Mexicans murderers. He said, well, what do you think I should have done? I said, I think you should have punched him in the face and then gotten out of the race. Yeah, you would have well, been a hero. I'd like to punch him in the face. I said, if we were in high school, I'd take him behind the gym and beat the hell out of him. Punch some people in the face. When was the last time an actor assassinated a president? Well, there you go. <laughs> What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your ride share extraordinaire. Your super duper Uber drivers here, guys. Yes, thank you. Thank you. You guys, you already know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. Por favor. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Hop on in. Buckle in and let's go. Yeah! Okay, okay, party people, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. All right, Ken, folks, what are we talking about today, folks? Man, oh man, what a crazy weekend we had. And I would like to thank God once again for sparing Donald Trump's life. And shout out to Mr. Corey the man that got deleted at the rally. He took a bullet protecting his daughter and you're a hero, sir. Shout out to you and your family and condolences. But now we've got a couple of days of trying to figure out what's going on. We already know that the uh, DEI secret service led by Kim Cheadle, she's a mess. And now we're trying to figure out what's going on. Why do we have, uh, Oompa Lumpas, five foot three female secret agents protecting, uh, six foot three Donald Trump? The little girls, basically little girls. We got these three stooges over here. Don't know what the hell's going on. And this could have been a big, big, big mistake here. Um, so now we're trying to figure out what's going on and how this happened. And on my show, I'm going to say this. There is no way a 20 year old was able to get a rifle, walk up, climb a ladder, set up shop and aim at the president and took five shots without nobody knowing. Somebody put him up to this. And we got a video here and I'm going to show you. Job, I wouldn't even be doing this. Look, they're all pointing. Yeah, someone's on top of the roof. Look. There he is right there. Right there. See him? He's laying down. See him? Yeah, he's laying down. And still, I'm here with you fighting like hell to get a sense of the world. What's happening? And to make sure we take back the White House because if we do, we're going to make America better than ever before. We're going to make it. Yeah, look, and there he is. Because we have millions and millions Officer. of people in our country that shouldn't be here. Dangerous people. Criminals. We have criminals. We have drug dealers. We have people that should not be here. And it's much tougher than it happened to be. We have the border ever. In recorded history, we had the best border. In fact, if they could ever put up a chart, I don't know if they can do it. Do you guys have access to that chart that I love so much? You don't mind if I go off teleprompter, do you? Because these teleprompters are so damn boring. I try and explain that. Oh, it is. Wow. You guys are doing it. They're getting better with time. My guys, take a look at that chart. Take a look at the arrow on the bottom. See the big red, red arrow, right? So that's when I left office. That was the lowest point, and that comes right from the government services comes right out of border patrol take a look at that so that arrow is the lowest 
amount of illegal immigration ever in recorded history into our country. And then, and then the worst president in the history of our country took over. And look what happened to our country. Probably 20 million people. And you know, that's a little bit old, that chart. That chart's a couple of months old. And if you want to see something, that says, that's absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. There is no way that all these people was trying to get the attention of the cops and nobody, nobody even tried to get the president off stage. You ain't had to shoot the boy, right? Cool. But you could have got the Trump off stage. Don't you have these little radio thingamajigs talking about it as a threat? No. Two minutes. Two minutes and five shots later, then you take him out. Ain't no way. All right, I serve in the military, and I know a little thing here and there, but I'm no expert of no sniper. But we have one, and he have a video, and I'm going to share with y'all right quick. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm here to tell you why the shooting of President Donald Trump yesterday, without a doubt in my mind, was a planned and coordinated attack on the president inside our government, our local agency, or police force. Here's why. My name is Matthew Murphy, and I am a retired Green Beret, retired from this Special Forces Group, but I'm also a level one sniper, which means that I have graduated the, the highest level of training for snipers that you can do in special operations. We're trained, I'm gonna avoid uh, confidential or classified terminology. We're trained in assassinations and counter assassinations for the very reason, uh, uh, case in point, yesterday, the shooting of President Donald Trump. So. First of all, uh, anywhere the president's going to go, there are teams from the Secret Service that go out days, if not weeks, if not months, before the president will ever be at that spot. And they do a site security assessment. And they do that with the local uh, police forces and agencies to ensure that every potential security threat or vulnerability is secured and, of course, protected against. Now, this is done way before Donald Trump will ever get there, and they know every place that the president will be, and the sniper team especially is responsible for ensuring that no one can take a shot at the president. Now, that does not mean that the sniper team just sets up with their guns and scans the crowd and shoots. No, what they do, the most important thing they do, pre-Donald Trump showing up, is within a 360-degree environment of that podium of the president, they ensure that there is not a place that is open that will be accessible by someone with a rifle to take a shot at the president. So they make sure those places are barricaded off, unaccessible, and heavily guarded so there is no way you are gonna get to the place where you can even shoot the president with a rifle before the president shows up. Then they scan the crowd and those places with the rifle just in case by some miracle you do. Now, you're not going to tell me, I don't care who you are, don't listen to the media, nonsense anyways, I think most of us know that by now, that some 20-year-old kid that looks like he played Dungeons & Dragons in his mom's basement is trained on a gun, especially a sniper rifle like that, is a registered Republican, and then can access anywhere near the vicinity of that crowd, of that event, with him not dressed in a uniform and that sniper rifle. He was wearing American flag t-shirt and pants and he had a rifle. You're gonna tell me that that kid went through all the levels of security, somehow got into the closest building to the president, then accessed the rooftop of the closest building to the president, then had the time to unpack his rifle lay down in the prone, and then take five to eight well-aimed shots at the president before he was decisively engaged by the Secret Service's counter sniper teams or a local police department. I don't know who they were. Most likely police. You're going to tell me all that happened and a 20-year-old kid did that without it being heavily planned, coordinated, and people on the inside making it happen? There is absolutely no way possible that that kid was able to get up there and take those shots at the president without a lot of internal help. So someone in that local, or, or some people inside that local police department agency or secret service is compromised and is a threat to our president. So we need to stop worrying about that damn shooter and start worrying about who allowed this shit to happen. 
And President Trump, if you need an American to protect you who's actually good at sniping and stopping this crap, give me a call. I'll do it for free. And I totally agree. Ain't no way this guy was able to do this on his own. There's no way. So this all is on Mr. Biden's head. And uh, I know that he's not running the country. And I can't say that he the one to order the hit. But when you say you got to put the bullseye on Trump. Let's talk about the conversation this has started. And it's really about language, what we say out loud and the consequences of those. You called your opponent an existential threat uh, on a call a week ago. You said it's time to put Trump in the bullseye. There's some dispute about the, the context, but I think you appreciate I didn't say crosshairs. I was talking about focus on. Look, the truth of the matter was what I guess I was talking about at the time was there was very little focus on Trump's uh, agenda. Yeah, the term was bullseye. It was, a, it was a mistake to use the word. I didn't. I didn't say crosshairs. I meant bullseye. I meant focus on him. Focus on what he's doing. <clears throat> yeah, Mr. Biden doesn't look good, sir. It doesn't look good. Now Trump has been saying that there are people out here trying to kill him. But of course, who got Chucky Schumer, the grill master, he says that this is all false. What Donald Trump said, falsely suggesting his political opponents are out to kill him, is beyond the pale and is the stuff that leads to political violence. Everyone who is here on January 6th should immediately see what he's doing, what Donald Trump is doing using conspiracy theories to spin the hard right into a frenzy. This is how people get killed, how the seeds of political violence are sowed, and how people lose faith in this democracy. Donald Trump has no regard for that. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. We are in a crazy times right now. But there is a silver lining. There is a silver lining. This morning when I woke up, they had pulled... MSNBC, Morning Joe, off the air, maybe for the day, but it looks like it'll be a pattern of getting these hate mongers off the air. But his rhetoric is really getting dangerous, more and more dangerous. And we saw what happened on January 6th when he uses inflammatory rhetoric now and his recent true social post uh, is incredibly, incredibly scary for anyone uh, that might be trying to op work in government. And um, it is just uh, unquestionable at this point that that man cannot see public office again. He is not only unfit, he is destructive to our democracy, uh, and he has to be, uh, he has to be eliminated. We all say the same thing, you know, that he's Adolf, or he's a threat to democracy, existential threat to democracy. Every day you wake up, they say the same thing. MSNBC. Of course, it's Trump is a Nazi time again. Let's deal with Hitler, okay? I, I don't think it's hyperbolic to say that. I mean, that is Mussolini, Hitler-like language. Trump's affinity for Hitler was always covered under an umbrella of his stupidity. Echoing Hitler's words. Listen to this. Well, Hitler was duly elected. That's right. Echoing the hateful rhetoric of Adolf Hitler. It echoes Hitler. That's the kind of language Hitler used in Mein Kampf. About vermin and, the, and Hitler and Mussolini. That's a horrifying clip. That's a fascist clip. We're just going full on Hitler. It's from Hitler's Germany. We just need to say for the record that the term vermin was really effectively used by Adolf Hitler. Echo dictators like Hitler. With language evoking authoritarian figures like Adolf Hitler and Adolf Hitler. It's Donald Trump parroted the autocratic language of Adolf Hitler. Talk about the brilliance of Hitler's generals. Correct. General Kelly, yeah. Now, hopefully, for the next year or two, you don't have to hear none of that no more. Because now they don't have to change their little language now. They had to change their rhetoric. Right now, the speech writers are taking these words out and scrubbing them off their, their list because they can't say it for, for at least a year or two. No more they're going to compare Trump as Adolf. Not the talent. Everybody else could probably do it, but now nah, they're not going to do that for at least a, a year or two because they know it's inflammatory and they've been doing this for too long. Too long. Now, you know you're a great president when they try to take you out. Abraham Lincoln.
Ronald Reagan, Kennedy, and they try to take out Trump. You know you're in good company, Trump. If you guys got any value out of my content, do me a favor. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe. You see that notification bell? Turn on that notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends and tell your mama I said hi. <laughs> all right, all right. Till next time, guys, I'll see you again. And all you haters, get your ass off my lawn.